Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. Are ghosts real? Ghost hunters like to believe that ghosts exist, but science and logic are the real ghost busters. If you believe in ghosts, you're not alone. Cultures all around the world believe in spirits that survive death to live in another realm. In fact, ghosts are among the most widely believed of paranormal phenomenon, millions of people are interested in ghosts, and thousands read ghost stories on Reddit every day. It's more than mere entertainment. A 2019 Ipsos poll found that 46% of Americans say they truly believe in ghosts. The nation is discerning in its undead beliefs. Only 7% of respondents said they believe in vampires. The idea that the dead remain with us in spirit is an ancient one, appearing in countless stories from the Bible to Macbeth. It even spawned a folklore genre, ghost stories. Belief in ghosts is part of a larger web of related paranormal beliefs, including near-death experience, life after death, and spirit communication. The belief offers many people comfort who doesn't want to believe that our beloved but deceased family members aren't looking out for us or with us in our times of need. People have tried to, or claim to, communicate with spirits for ages. In Victorian England, for example, it was fashionable for upper-crust ladies to hold seances in their parlors after tea and crumpets with friends. Ghost clubs dedicated to searching for ghostly evidence formed at prestigious universities, including Cambridge and Oxford, and in 1882 the most prominent organization, the Society for Psychical Research, was established. A woman named Eleanor Sidgwick was an investigator, and later president, of that group, and could be considered the original female ghostbuster. In America during the late 1800s, many psychic mediums claimed to speak to the dead, but were later exposed as frauds by skeptical investigators such as Harry Houdini. Much of this is due to the hit sci-fi cable TV series Ghost Hunters, which aired 230 episodes and found no good evidence for ghosts. The show spawned dozens of spin-offs and imitators, and it's not hard to see why the show is so popular, the premise is that anyone can look for ghosts. The two original stars were ordinary guys, plumbers, in fact, who decided to look for evidence of spirits. Their message, you don't need to be an egghead scientist, or even have any training in science or investigation. All you need is some free time, a dark place, and maybe a few gadgets from an electronic store. If you look long enough any unexplained light or noise might be evidence of ghosts. That vague criteria for ghostly happenings is part of the reason why myths about the afterlife are more alive than ever. The Science and Logic of Ghosts One dif difficulty in scientifically evaluating ghosts is that a surprisingly wide variety of phenomena are attributed to ghosts, from a door closing on its own, to missing keys, to a cold area in a hallway, to a vision of a dead relative. When sociologists Dennis and Michelle Waskell interviewed ghost experiencers for their 2016 book Ghostly Encounters, The Hauntings of Everyday Life, Temple University Press, they found that many participants were not sure that they had encountered a ghost and remained uncertain that such phenomena were even possible, simply because they did not see something that approximated the conventional image of a ghost. Instead, many of our respondents were simply convinced that they had experienced something uncanny something inexplicable, extraordinary, mysterious, or eerie. Thus, many people who go on record as claiming to have had a ghostly experience didn't necessarily see anything that most people would recognize as a classic ghost, and in fact they may have had completely different experiences whose only common factor is that it could not be readily explained. Personal experience is one thing, but scientific evidence is another matter. Part of the difficulty in investigating ghosts is that there is not one universally agreed-upon definition of what a ghost is. Some believe that they are spirits of the dead who for whatever reason get lost on their way to the other side, others claim that ghosts are instead telepathic entities projected into the world from our minds. Still others create their own special categories for different types of ghosts, such as pol poltergeists, residual hauntings, intelligent spirits, and shadow people. Of course, it's all made up, like speculating on the different races of fairies or dragons, there are as many types of ghosts as you want there to be. There are many contradictions inherent in ideas about ghosts. For example, are ghosts material or not? Either they can move through solid objects without disturbing them, or they can slam doors shut and throw objects across the room. 
According to logic and the laws of physics, it's one or the other. If ghosts are human souls, why do they appear clothed in with, presumably soulless, inanimate objects like hats, canes, and dresses not to mention the many reports of ghost trains, cars and carriages? If ghosts are the spirits of those whose deaths were unavenged, why are there unsolved murders, since ghosts are said to communicate with psychic mediums and should be able to identify their killers for the police? The questions go on and on just about any claim about ghosts raises logical reasons to doubt it. Ghost hunters use many creative and dubious methods to detect the spirits' presences, often including psychics. Virtually all ghost hunters claim to be scientific and most give that appearance because they use high-tech scientific equipment such as Geiger counters, electromagnetic field, EMF, detectors, ion detectors, infrared cameras and sensitive microphones. Yet none of this equipment has ever been shown to actually detect ghosts. For centuries, centuries, people believed that flames turned blue in the presence of ghosts. Today, few people accept that bit of lore, but it's likely that many of the signs taken as evidence by today's ghost hunters will be seen as just as wrong and antiquated centuries from now. Other researchers claim that the reason ghosts haven't been proven to exist is that we simply don't have the right technology to find or detect the spirit world. But this, too, can't be correct, either ghosts exist and appear in our ordinary physical world and can therefore be detected and recorded in photographs, film, video and audio recordings, or they don't. If ghosts exist and can be scientifically detected or recorded, then we should find hard evidence of that yet we don't. If ghosts exist but cannot be scientifically detected or recorded, then all the photos, videos, audio and other recordings claim to be evidence of ghosts cannot be ghosts. With so many basic contradictory theories and so little science brought to bear on the topic it's not surprising that despite the efforts of thousands of ghost hunters on television and elsewhere for decades, not a single piece of hard evidence of ghosts has been found. And of course, with the recent development of ghost apps for smartphones, it's easier than ever to create seemingly spooky images and share them on social media, making separating fact from fiction even more difficult for ghost researchers. Most people who believe in ghosts do so because of some personal experience, they grew up in a home where the existence of friendly spirits was taken for granted, for example, or they had some unnerving experience on a ghost tour or local haunt. However, many people believe that support for the existence of ghosts can be found in no less a hard science than modern physics. It is widely claimed that Albert Einstein suggested a scientific basis for the reali reality of ghosts, based on the first law of thermodynamics, if energy cannot be created or destroyed but only change form, what happens to our body's energy when we die? Could that somehow be manifested as a ghost? It seems like a reasonable assumption until you dig into the basic physics. The answer is very simple and not at all mysterious. After a person dies, the energy in his or her body goes where all organisms' energy goes after death, into the environment. The energy is released in the form of heat, and the body is transferred into the animals that eat us, i.e., wild animals if we are left unburied, or worms and bacteria if we are interred, and the plants that absorb us. There is no bodily energy that survives death to be detected with popular ghost hunting devices. While amateur ghost hunters like to imagine themselves on the cutting edge of ghost research, they are really engaging in what folklorists call ostension or legend tripping. It's basically a form of play acting in which people act out a legend, often involving ghosts or supernatural elements. In his book Aliens, Ghosts and Cults, Legends We Live, University Press of Mississippi, 2003, Folklorist Bill Ellis points out that ghost hunters themselves often take the search seriously and venture out to challenge supernatural beings, confront them in consciously dramatized form, then return to safety. The stated purpose of such activities is not entertainment, but a sincere effort to test and define boundaries of the real world. If ghosts are real and are some sort of as yet unknown energy or entity, then their existence will, will, like all other scientific discoveries, be discovered and verified by scientists, through controlled experiments not by weekend ghost hunters wandering around abandoned houses in the dark late at night with cameras and flashlights. In the end, and despite mountains of ambiguous photos, sounds, and videos, the evidence for ghosts is no better today than it was a century ago. There are two possible reasons for the failure of ghost hunters to find good evidence. 
The first is that ghosts don't exist, and that reports of ghosts can be explained by psychology, misperceptions, mistakes and hoaxes. The second option is that ghosts do exist, but that ghost hunters do not possess the scientific tools or mindset to uncover any meaningful evidence. But ultimately, ghost hunting is not about the evidence at all, if it was, the search would have been abandoned long ago. Instead, it's about having fun with friends, telling stories, and the enjoyment of pretending to search the edge of the unknown. After all, everyone loves a good ghost story. A shadowy figure rushed through the door. It had a skeletal body, surrounded by a white, blurry aura. The figure hovered and didn't seem to have a face. Dom, who prefers to use only his first name, had been fast asleep. Just 15 at the time, he panicked and closed his eyes. I only saw it for a second, he recalls. Now, he's a young adult who lives in the United Kingdom. But he still remembers the experience vividly. Was the figure a ghost? In the mythology, mythology of the United States and many other Western cultures, a ghost or spirit is a dead person who interacts with the living world. In stories, a ghost may whisper or groan, cause things to move or fall, mess with electronics even appear as a shadowy, blurry, or see-through figure. Ghost stories are lots of fun, especially on Halloween. But some people believe that ghosts are real. Chapman University in Orange, California, runs a yearly survey that asks people in the United States about their beliefs in the paranormal. In 2018, 58% of those polled agreed with the statement, places can be haunted by spirits. And almost one in five people from the United States said in another survey, conducted by the Pew Research Center in Washington, D.C., that they've seen or been in the presence of a ghost. On ghost hunting TV shows, people use scientific equipment to attempt to record or measure spirit activity. And numerous creepy photos and videos make it seem like ghosts exist. However, none of these offer good evidence of ghosts. Some are hoaxes, created to fool people. The rest only prove that equipment sometimes can capture noise, images, or other signals that people don't expect. Ghosts are the least likely of many possible explanations. Not only are ghosts supposed to be able to do things that science says are impossible, such as turn invisible or pass through walls, but also scientists using reliable research methods have found zero evidence that ghosts exist. What scientists have discovered, though, are lots of reasons why people might feel they have had ghostly encounters. What their data show is that you can't always trust your eyes, ears or brain. Dreaming with your eyes open. Dom began having unusual experiences when he was 8 or 9. He would wake up unable to move. He researched what was happening to him. And he learned that science had a name for it, sleep par paralysis. This condition leaves someone feeling awake, but paralyzed or frozen in place. He can't move or speak or breathe deeply. He may also see, hear or feel figures or creatures that aren't really there. This is called a hallucination. Sometimes, Dom hallucinated that creatures were walking or sitting on him. Other times, he heard screaming. He only saw something that one time, as a teenager. Sleep paralysis happens when the brain messes up the process of falling asleep or waking. Usually, you only start dreaming after you're fully asleep. And you stop dreaming before you waken. Sleep paralysis is like dreaming with your eyes open, explains Balin Jalal. A neuroscientist, he studies sleep paralysis at the University of Cambridge in England. He says this is why it happens. Our most vivid, lifelike dreams happen during a certain stage of sleep. It's called rapid eye movement, or REM, sleep. In this stage, your eyes dart around under their closed lids. Though your eyes move, the rest of your body can't. It's paralyzed. Most likely, that's to prevent people from acting out their dreams. That could get dangerous. Imagine flailing your arms and legs as you play dream basketball, only to whack your knuckles on the wall and tumble to the floor. Your brain usually turns this paralysis off before you wake up. But in sleep paralysis, you wake up while it's still happening. Faces in the clouds. You don't have to experience sleep paralysis to sense things that aren't there. Have you ever felt your phone buzz, then check to find there was no message? Have you heard someone calling your name when no one was there? 
Have you ever seen a face or figure in a dark shadow? These misperceptions also count as hallucinations, says David Smales. He's a psychologist in England at Northumbr Northumbria University in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. He thinks that just about everyone has such experiences. Most of us just ignore them. But some may turn to ghosts as the explanation. We're used to our senses giving us accurate information about the world. So when experiencing a hallucination, our first instinct is usually to believe it. If you see or feel the presence of a loved one who died and trust your perceptions then it has to be a ghost, says Smales. That's easier to believe than the idea that your brain is lying to you. The brain has a tough job. Information from the world bombards you as a mixed-up jumble of signals. The eyes take in color. The ears take in sounds. The skin senses pressure. The brain works to make sense of this mess. This is called bottom-up processing. And the brain is very good at it. It's so good that it sometimes finds meaning in meaningless things. This is known as periidolia, periidolia. You experience it whenever you stare at clouds and see rabbits, ships or faces. Or gaze at the moon and see a face. The brain also does top-down processing. It adds information to your perception of the world. Most of the time, there is way too much stuff coming in through the senses. Paying attention to all of it would overwhelm you. So your brain picks out the most important parts. And then it fills in the rest. The vast majority of perception is the brain filling in the gaps, explains Smales. What you see right now isn't what's actually out there in the world. It's a picture your brain painted for you based on signals captured by your eyes. The same goes for your other senses. Most of the time, this picture is accurate. But sometimes, sometimes, the brain adds things that aren't there. For example, when you mishear the lyrics in a song, your brain filled in a meaning that wasn't there. And it will most likely continue to mishear those words even after you learn the right ones. This is very similar to what happens when so-called ghost hunters capture sounds that they say are ghosts speaking. They call this electronic voice phenomenon, or EVP. The recording is probably just random noise. If you listen to it without knowing what was supposedly said, you probably won't hear words. But when you know what the words are supposed to be, you might now find that you can discern them easily. Your brain may also add faces to images of random noise. Research has shown that patients who experience visual hallucinations are more likely than normal to experience periidolia see faces in random shapes, for instance. In one 2018 study, Smale's team tested whether this might also be true for healthy people. They recruited 82 volunteers. First, the researchers asked a series of questions about how often these volunteers had hallucination-like experiences. For example, do you ever see things other people cannot? And do you ever think that everyday things look abnormal to you? Next, the participants looked at 60 images of black and white noise. For a very brief moment, another image would flash in the center of the noise. Twelve of these images were faces that were easy to see. Another 24 were hard to see faces. And 24 more images showed no faces at all just more noise. The volunteers had to report whether a face was present or absent in each flash. In a separate test, the researchers showed the same volunteers a series of 36 images. Two-thirds of them contained a face periidolia. The remaining 12 did not. Participants who had initially reported more hallu hallucination-like experiences were also more likely to report faces in the flashes of random noise. They were also better at identifying those images that contained face periidolia. In the next few years, Smales plans to study situations in which people might be more likely to see faces in randomness. When people sense ghosts, he points out, they're often alone, in the dark and scared. If it's dark, your brain can't get much visual information from the world. It has to create more of your reality for you. In this type of situation, Smales says, the brain may be more likely to impose its own creations onto reality. Did you see the gorilla? The brain's picture of reality sometimes includes things that aren't there. But it can also completely miss things that are there. This is called inattentional blindness. 
Want to know how it works? Watch the video before you keep reading. The video shows people in white and black shirts passing a basketball. Count how many times the people in white shirts pass the ball. How many did you see? Partway through the video, a person in a gorilla suit walks through the players. Did you see it? About half of all viewers who count passes while watching the video miss the gorilla completely. If you too missed the gorilla, you experienced inattentional blindness. You were likely in a state called absorption. That's when you are so focused on a task that you tune out everything else. Memory does not work like a video camera, says Christopher French. He is a psychologist in England at Goldsmiths University of London. You only remember things you're paying attention to. Some people are more likely to become absorbed than others. And these people also report higher levels of paranormal beliefs, he says, including beliefs in ghosts. How could th these things be related? Some strange experiences that people blame on ghosts involve unexplained sounds or movements. A window may seem to open all by itself. But what if someone opened it and you just didn't notice because you were so absorbed in something else? That's a lot more likely than a ghost, French says. In one 2014 study, French and his colleagues found that people with higher levels of paranormal beliefs and higher tendencies to get absorbed are also more likely to experience inattentional blindness. They also tend to have a more limited working memory. That's how much information you can hold in your memory at once. If you have trouble keeping lots of information in your memory or paying attention to more than one thing at once, then you risk missing sensory cues from the environment around you. And you might blame any misperceptions that result on a ghost. The power of critical thinking. Anyone may experience sleep paralysis, hallucinations, periidolia, or inattentional blindness. But not everyone turns to ghosts or other supernatural beings as a way to explain these experiences. Even as a child, Dom never thought he had come face to face with a real ghost. He went online and asked questions about what might have happened. He used critical thinking. And he got the answers he needed. When an episode happens now, he uses a technique that Jalal developed. Dom doesn't try to stop the episode. He just focuses on his breathing, tries to relax as much as possible, and waits for it to pass. He says, I deal with it far better. I just sleep and enjoy sleeping. Robin Andrews is a psychology student at the University of South Wales in Treforest. She wondered if people with stronger critical thinking skills might be less likely to believe in the paranormal. So she and her mentor, psychologist Philip Tyson, recruited 687 students for a study about their paranormal beliefs. The students majored in a wide range of different fields. Each was asked how strongly he or she agreed with statements such as, it is possible to communicate with the dead. Or your mind or soul can leave your body and travel. The research team also looked at the students' grades on a recent assignment. Students with higher grades tended to have lower levels of paranormal beliefs, this study found. And students in the physical sciences, engineering or math tended not to believe as strongly as those studying the arts. This trend also has been seen in research by others. This study did not actually assess the students' ability to think critically. That's something we would look into as a future study, says Andrews. However, previous research has shown that science students tend to have stronger critical thinking skills than art students. That's probably because you need to think critically in order to conduct scientific experiments. And thinking critically can help you scout out likely causes for an unusual experience without involving ghosts, or aliens, or Bigfoot. Even among science students and working scientists, though, paranormal beliefs persist. Andrews and Tyson think that's a problem. If you can't judge whether a ghost story or spooky experience is real or not, you may also get fooled by advertisements, bogus medical cures or fake news, says Tyson. It's important for everyone to learn how to question information and seek reasonable, realistic explanations. So if someone tells you a ghost story this Halloween, enjoy it. But remain skeptical. Think about other possible explanations for what was described. Remember that your mind may fool you into experiencing spooky things. Wait, what's that behind you? Boo. 
Thank you for watching see you again for another interesting facts and amazing stories and also please like and subscribe.